Right, well, good morning. Welcome to the April 25th Raleigh County Commissioner's meeting. Uh, please rise to join the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, you got some comments? Maybe. Yeah, I have something real quick for you, commissioners. Uh, David Adams, the MSAMS director. Just let you know that uh, myself and two of our captains will be out of town next week, Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be traveling to Lynn, Missouri, which is south side of uh, Columbia, uh, mm -hmm. for the mid build inspection of our ambulance that'll be arriving this summer. Oh. So we do a mid build. The body has been built uh, to make sure that all the cabinets are, are what you per specs. All of the electrical outlets and, and all of the electrical wiring is, is per specs and, and things like that. So we'll go up uh, Tuesday evening, late afternoon, spend the night, and then we'll spend the day Wednesday doing all the measurements and doing everything. And then we'll come back Wednesday, uh, late afternoon, early evening. And then we'll go, I'll go back up. We'll go back up uh, when the truck is finished. And then we'll do our final inspection. And that takes a, a full solid day. Oh, sure. To go through that and before we take delivery of it. So, just want to let you know that uh, Josh will be in town and Alex will be in town, but myself and two of our, our captains will be going out. So, okay. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other public comment? Just uh, real briefly, commissioners, I'd like to ask that you uh, have a motion to add an executive session to my administrator. Make a motion that we had an executive session to Clancy Hillman's administrative services work uh, session. I would second that. I moved and second to add an executive session to uh, Clancy Hillman's time. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> okay. Um, well, Thursday after our meeting, I followed up on some issues with um, Keats and University Park sewer projects. Um, hopefully, we can get that resolved. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, later that afternoon, I attended a retirement reception for Steve Smothers, director of the AQ Mueller School of Journalism at K State. Um, he's been a longtime friend, so I was asked to speak on his behalf. There's a lot of Pictures on Facebook. Too. Yeah. <laughs> was a lot of fun. <laughs> He's been a long time friend. So um, there are a lot of people in attendance from several areas and out of town and former students um, that have returned to celebrate his retirement. So he's, he's thousands of students mm -hmm. he's had in the past few years. Highlight was a special performance by the KSU Pep Band um, and Flag Bear and Porter. And the big surprise for everyone was great. You know, they played about four or five songs. It was in took some time. So anyway, that was a great time. All right. I hope I didn't miss a whole lot of the county meeting. So you said you'd seen that one two presentation before. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd seen, yeah, I'd seen the almost the final. Yeah, then you did miss it. I'd look at the <laughs> presentation. Nice. The other side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man. So uh, Friday, I met with several residents from the Hot Plains Ranch uh, with Craig Cox. Uh, they've been requesting a taxing district to pay the main road into the development for over a year. Um, after a lot of legal work and other issues, the final proposed assessments were given to the residents. And uh, at that time, uh, hopefully the request will be ready for us to um, give approval uh, next week. We hope we have that before us. That time it'll need to be advertised with a 20 day waiting period and then it goes out to bid. So it's quite a process and, and I've been following and learning, you know, how this whole process works. And um, so I'm happy to see it's almost coming to a conclusion. So there's been a lot of uh, rough road, <laughs> rough roads with it. So <laughs> anyway, um, the weekend, I caught up on a lot of household chores. I uh, was able to work in the yard um, with help of my neighbor. Um, Sunday, I went to church, spent some time in my home office in the afternoon going over um, various applications for our jobs that are available. And, uh, a lot of things come up. That's it for me. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Um, Thursday afternoon, I attended the uh, city county county meeting here in the board chambers. Um, from my perspective, I hadn't seen it yet. Uh, it was nice to get that full update from the Food and Farm Council. It's been quite some time since we heard from them, but not for lack of effort. COVID plays a part of that probably too. And from the sounds of it, they're working pretty hard in some key areas, including getting that completion of that local master food plan. It's something they've been really, really trying to get done since 2019. So um, then later we also heard from Pot County and their need to see some transportation improvements in around the Highway 24 sector to uh, in the meeting. Um, it was a little long meeting because <laughs> of things, but um, definitely, um, definitely productive to hear from the Food and Farm Council and from everybody. So uh, Thursday afternoon, the uh, Manhattan Area Technical College had their spring open house and then also had a ribbon cutting, <laughs> ribbon cutting ceremony to officially open their new Festo Industrial Engineering Technology Lab there on campus. Um, I missed it because I had to make an emergency trip to Topeka. We don't need to talk oh, yeah. about that. Um, so, and uh, all, all's well there, too. Um, um, this will actually be a wonderful addition for training in our areas. It will help provide education and cutting edge skills and control systems, robotics, and protection line designs and innovations to help keep up with changes in many types of different workplaces today. So something I think will be a game changer and something I'm very happy to see MATC be able to do and facilitate moving forward. And then also on Friday, we have the uh, Grow uh, Green Match Day um, uh, done by the Greater Community Foundation every year around this time in April. Um, this year's 24 hour giving period reached $1.2 million. Wow. Yeah. Um, far surpassing last year's total of 979,000. Um, contributions ranged anywhere from $25 to $1,000. There was a couple of the organizations that did some matching in some other specific areas as well. And um, a variety of local organizations uh, will benefit uh, greatly, including Shepherd's Crossing, Middle Arc Hills, and No Stone on Turn, just, just to kind of name a few. So, um, K State Baseball did pretty good over the weekend. Yeah. I thought now. UC Cal Irvin is a pretty good baseball school, so it wasn't a slouch that we played against. Now, if the Royals can just take notice of that and do something, um, that would be nice as well. But other than that, the weekend was um, pretty laid back and quiet, so that's all I've got. Well, Thursday afternoon, as mentioned, I attended the uh, city, county, county meeting. Um, as you said, we had a food, uh, food system assessment survey and um, and also some stuff about the transportation problem in Pot County. Uh, Friday, my wife and I went to Hamilton, Missouri, where the Missouri Star Quilt Company gets located. They so they started small about two years ago. They've got a full block on both sides of the street of quilt shops now. Yeah. Different type of fabric in each of them. A lot of stuff I didn't know. You know, all kind of But um, and it's I mean there's. They have a bus there. They have buses coming all the time from different places. But they also put one of the storefronts as Manland. They've got a TV, recliners. They got vending machines and a pool table. Cool. So replace for old husbands to go sit while they're not tapping through stuff. Hmm? Then you tap. Oh you no! Know, they didn't have that. that. <laughs> they didn't have anything on like that. It's just strictly pop and candy okay. bars, okay. but it was still. Um, they also created a quilt museum in the old grade school, which went through it. So there's a lot of interesting stuff in that mm -hmm. too. So it was a, a long trip over there and back, but it was a good day. And uh, Saturday, tried to work in the yard, got blown out of the yard. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sunday, when it was settled down, I didn't get some good work, <laughs> work done outside. And other than that, we're ready for the business meeting. So you can read those. You, okay. you, read, you read off what's going on. Congratulations. <laughs> so the first item we have is a mental health month uh, for 2022 proclamation. It's for May of 22. Yep. Okay. Yep. There you go. Okay. Go ahead and make a motion that we uh, accept and sign and approve the uh, mental health month uh, 2022 proclamation. I would second that. Been moved and seconded to approve the mental health month uh, proclamation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Well, I'm going to be here later. Okay. Yeah. Get your meeting then. Yeah. 
You can be. No, it has. Where is? This new thing's all one of the fun last ones. Oh, this one yeah. isn't too long. No, yeah. We can read it if we want to. It's not. It's not too bad. They shortened it up starting last year too, because I realized it was a little long. And he'll need one copy of that back to read later for the press conference. Okay, perfect. Next, we have a highway use permit granting Larson Construction permission to complete work in the right way to bore and water service under South 40th Street and McDowell Creek Road. Okay, I'm ready for that overlay over there. Okay. So this is because of the overlay, mm -hmm. the asphalt overlay, we need this. I don't believe it's because of it. I think they're just installing a water line there. So they're boring on the right way. Uh, okay. So is that for I should need new private? service for new house. It is for new service. I'm guessing they have got a house. I want to go ahead and make a motion that we approve the highway use permit allowing Lars Construction to do work down on South 40 and Dow Creek Road. I would second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the highway use permit for Larson construction. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I think it's just the chairman only. Yeah. I don't have anything, um, any changes to the minutes. I don't know if anybody else did. Um, is the peer company for Scorpion, is that Heat Dialogue? Heat. Heat? Okay. Mm -hmm. But except read something that they're changing the name of it. Yeah, it, was, it didn't make a lot of sense to me, but I thought maybe it was a type of It was, it was called, that was Heat. It said Heat, but then there was some other else with the change in the name. Something else. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing I was questioning. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'd make a motion. To, name, but, yeah. yeah, I'd make a motion to approve the um, minutes dated April 21st, 20, 2022, as presented. I'll second. Been moved and second to approve the minutes of the April 21st meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Don't have anything for uh, tentative agendas are fine. Could keep them on. Of course, we're not here Thursday. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Monday, plan for a long day. <laughs> yep. Nothing for the press conference. So, break until nine o'clock. Robin Cole. Yeah, have a good one. Thanks, good one. But for comments this morning, should I send those over to you instead of? Yes. Okay. So I if you wouldn't mind video. all week, oh. well, obviously we're off the meeting, but anything you need this week, you can email Cindy and myself. Okay. Yep. Okay. She should be back Tuesday. Okay. Okay. I sent them already to. Cindy. Yeah, I did too, but I'll go ahead and. I think her out of office is on, so if you had it, seen it, it wasn't. Oh no. No. Okay. That's why I was wondering. I don't know if I have your email. We store it anyway. It's K C R. There it is. K C R A G G. Yep, at Riley County. K Craig. Yes. Okay. Well, 
34. Yeah, I know. Another one came in late last night. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> right now, I'm just I'm just saving them, and if we need to, I'll come back to them. Also, at that food, whatever they're called, they said she kept saying something. I didn't see it in the packet. They sent a copy of that stuff to us. I didn't see it. I didn't see it in the packet. I had a question about a couple of things, but they said we'll look on she it. She sent it in an email because I printed a hard copy of it. Was it? Yeah, she sent it in an email okay. about a week or so ago. Oh, maybe I didn't yeah. look back. Okay. That. Yeah. Okay. But she sent each one of those separately, and I, because I, I printed off a hard copy, so it must have been email. I'm just going to get back on it, I guess. Let's see if I can. Right. Look back because I just started being a cup look back. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't yeah. on our or an agenda packet, but it was yeah. uh, email. Okay. I'm looking at my email. It's I'm getting your XX, XX. I know, I know a lot of these deleted, but I just haven't and look at it for the first time, but I need to go back and start. Well, I go on that. Yeah. You can always delete them and go back to the recovered delete items file it stores it for like six weeks or something. Or you can look yeah. at it in the main file. Yeah. Oh, here it is. I found it here. Cindy's on it, yes. Oh, there's a lot of this. Most of mine now are candidates routed for you. <laughs> yeah. I, I started another. You started? Well, no, I didn't know. I just started deleting because I just I keep one so I can go to it. Yeah, that's, that's what I do too. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, here yeah. shortly we'll start refining those a bit. Starting again. Yeah, I wrote down the names of today, which I thought there was somebody else, but and then I, didn't, I wrote oh. down two for next Monday. Yeah, I think so it's they're the same. Because we, we were going to do five, or is it four? There's okay, one. and we had a fifth one. one. Okay, yeah. we had a fifth one we were discussing. That's right. As a reschedule, phrase over. No, well, I think what it's, our, is that what it's, it's I'm hoping that's what I'm to because he said there are Elizabeth coming over, so I'm hoping that's what that's about. And what was the deal with Rich this morning? His daughter broke down her car. Oh, down. no, yeah, so I had to go rescue her. Oh, <laughs> oh. on the highway, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. He said, I could hear him in here talking. He says, Don't drive, shut it down. I'm yeah. like, uh oh, this doesn't yeah. sound good. <laughs> His girls have some him. unfortunate um, luck with vehicles. He's so, mentioned that from time yeah. to time. Yeah, he has. That's pretty scary. In fact, the little Honda that he drives, he may have been driving this morning. Yeah, he yeah. was this morning. Yeah. So it leaks well all over the place, but oh. it's his daughter's car. So he took it over and he just drives it every now and again to save gas mileage. Got like 210,000 miles on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. He just got to grab a drive that helps yeah. seal, yeah. seal up the driveway. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to take those out the highway. Very often, that's for sure. Those are filled with the oil. I realized when I was driving to Topeka on Thursday, I have a tendency to go a little fast on the interstate if I'm not paying attention. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I might not want to do that today with my driver's license <laughs> not on me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, might want to might yeah. want to keep well, it at 75. Just so I dropped it in the parking lot <laughs> yeah. last week. Yeah. Right? I'm going hurrying as fast as I can to go get it, officer. <laughs> yeah, I took the last $10 I had to my name <laughs> at the moment because I do everything on plastic and I bought cookies. <laughs> To give to him, so like thank you. <laughs> mm. oh, I do. Morning. How are you? Thank 
I'll hand this back to you just so I don't forget. Thank you. I thought you guys might get kicked out of that from Wednesday. Oh, <laughs> Dr. John. Yeah. Did you save them? I did. <laughs> I was going there and all said, I mean, this is one of the live mannequins. So it's got all the, yeah, it's like an $80,000 mannequin. Okay. You're sitting there and all of a sudden you can I feel the heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It was, it was kind of weird. Uh, right. Yeah, I've done that uh, in the fake one. Yeah. You know. That would be really strange to feel apart. Um, yeah, they were, you know, they're they're really kind of real like, you know, and their eyes move and got teeth and yeah, it's it, it was interesting. They got teeth? Yeah, they got teeth. Because when they train to put uh, incubation and stuff in there, you gotta train well, not how to break or tear up somebody's teeth, you know. So yeah. Mm. And you can hear and see feel respiration. Yeah, it's 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 pretty weird. It's pretty creepy. That is strange. I'm surprised they just don't bring a person in. <laughs> well, yeah. And the, 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 the trauma room, room in there was correct, correct. it was yeah. 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 the trauma room in there was about 85 degrees. Oh. And they keep it they keep it hot in there. Because when you come in a trauma, your body shocks a little bit more cold. Take most so, of the place in the hospital cold. Yeah, yeah. not there. <laughs> that was the one spot, and the guy who runs it, um, he was going through the going through the presentation or whatever. He had a he, he had a fleece on. I was like, are you, are you serious? Every time I go in the hospital for anything, I'd say, give me a warm blanket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so the rest of the hospital cold. was chilly, including yeah. the helipad. <laughs> Yeah, the one there is kind of nice because if you look straight due east, you get the entire downtown in, so you get the capital and all the buildings in. It's kind of a neat little background for pictures there if people are taking them, but it was too cloudy and windy for them to bring a lifeline in because that's what they, they actually usually bring one in so you can see it. And, You'll be in the idea about bringing so a fence to work. I think the dirt is so dry because mm -hmm. the fence is posted in there. They're there when we moved there 15 years ago. It started wood, I think the dirt is so, right. so dry. <clears throat> Makes sense. Heard of well, yeah, we've got a fence it. around our the trash receptacles out there, and one side of it blew over and they had to come back through and put it back up. There's a big fence down over on Kimball. I'm one of those residences. The whole thing's a lot. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's over there by Browning. I thought yeah. they were building that. No, it just fell over. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it was up before. Well, there's one kind of up the road there, too, that they're building, and they've got the post. Mm -hmm. You can tell. So they got the post in. They've got the fence laying down. I think they're waiting for a day. It's not windy. Yeah, to yeah. try to stand it up. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's up there off, off of Hudson up there, just kind of shooting back oh, down, okay. you know. I, I don't know. I, Evergene yeah. and Cox and everybody have been out there to do some work to oh. tie in everything. And then I think they're putting a, a, a fence over the top of it. Oh. Um, sure dried up fast. I had, had the garden tilled up. Oh. It didn't, didn't stay moist very long, that's for sure. Whatever that little bit of rain we got was, yeah, yeah. it didn't even. We got, I, what, was that Saturday, Saturday morning? Saturday, yeah. We had, no, ours was in the after, middle of the afternoon. We had a storm that came through. We got half an inch really? rain wow. in half an oh, hour. Wow. I mean, it just poured and then it was gone. But, oh. And then, yeah, because then we were in Manhattan later and we said, no, it didn't get anything here. And it rained over on my side just enough to kind of make things a little wet and it just dried right up. I didn't even measure my rain, rain gauge. So, yeah. It was poured there for about half hour and then it was which is not at least something. It's not much time. I'm calling for another chance. Thursday night. It was still dry. It was all kind of dry. So 
still kind of chilly in the mornings this time of the year. March weather. Yeah, we're a month off. Yeah, we are. That's why it stays hot through August and September now. And I get to feel like winter until about mid December. Maybe we should change the seasons like we need to do with the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it all at once and get it over with. It's not April or like March. Yeah. <laughs> First day of spring, April 21st. Just it's happened just last week. Yeah, 30 day adjustment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's ever gone anywhere in the house. Has it? Yeah. On that changing the time to. It's just I got thought past it was, the Saturday, no, I, was it? No, I thought it was a gun. Like, no. I, I never heard about it. I think it had one more step to go. No. Did it? I think, don't quote me on that. The president has to sign it too. Yeah. A lot of people are saying, you know, we don't want daylight savings time to permanently move up the time. So they're regularly told. We're going to stand your child. Well, yeah. January, it's going to be dark till I know. o'clock or something. In the morning. If the thought is, is that's okay because really nobody's farming or doing anything outside during kids are walking to school. True. That's what I think. And of course, for me, it didn't matter. I remember you know, walking one way uphill with no shoes on. <laughs> I can say, except in grade school, you could see it. <laughs> you have to walk out of my backyard. <laughs> now, junior high, it was wild, which in high school is very familiar to our kids. I just we didn't have lunches there, so I walked home and came back to mm. lunch. It's a mile and short. I, I'd skip lunch now before I had to walk a mile. Yeah, time. I hear you. Yeah. You know, we didn't have a long time before, but you know, could have just walked home. Brought his lunch. Yeah. My mom had ready to make lunch. Huh. That's, yeah. that's the best way to do it, really. Keep kept me in shape, I guess. That's all you said. Mm -hmm. Plenty of energy. Yeah. Better than those cartons of milk and that flat piece of cardboard pizza they used to serve. <laughs> I wonder if you know how cold my grandma was there for lunch. She was just, she was with us. Cold weather. Is that up in Little Worth? No. Oh. No. Speak of patients. Mine are both here, but they look totally different. Yeah. <laughs> Great tornado, 66 right there. Oh, it's yeah. School. Oh, wow. Right by. I mean, I have to walk more house. This house is right. Oh, wow. Hey, Jonas. Hey, Stan, how are you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get it. It's Monday, right? It's Monday, yeah. Well, I have my own business, so I don't have to do anything I don't want to do, but I don't have any employees, so if I don't do it, it doesn't get done. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Good morning. How are you all today? Good. 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 I've been wondering when you were going to call off the wind. <laughs> this is called off a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is the start of this would be the start of week three. It seems mm -hmm. like we just completed two weeks of 
strong wind. It feels like a month. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like a month. I think it's only been two months. So. I just know this wind is strong when it blows my hair around. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I guess I'd like to start by just saying, um, you know, Friday was Grow Green Mash Day in Manhattan. And what an incredible day that was. Um, the last I looked, there were 5,117 gifts um, to different funds at the Greater Manhattan Community Foundation. And on Friday, they raised over $1.2 million. And uh, Pawnee Mel Health is one of the funds that participates in Grow Green Match Day. And this year, and, and of course, there are people who will write checks. And as long as those checks were postmarked uh, by Friday, they'll be added um, to the amounts and to the match. We had 119 gifts and raised uh, all, over $23,000 in one day. And so that is really an amazing uh, opportunity. And we're very grateful to the Greater Manhattan Community Foundation for hosting that event each year. And of course, to Phil Howe for <coughs> making the match for the contributions that, that go to those um, not-for-profits at the Greater Manhattan Community Foundation. It's, um, it's just another example of what a great community this is and just how generous people are. And, you know, yet in spite of that, I continue to encounter people who have never heard of it and who don't know that the event exists or that there's an opportunity um, to have their contributions matched. So I, I guess it's just one more example of how you just can't communicate enough about certain things so but we're very very pleased about that um as as we'll talk about later at 9 30 of course may is mental health month and uh our theme this year is mental health month it's time to talk and so we uh we reached out to our employees and invited them to participate by coming up with different themes and uh this was a staff generated theme, so there's a lot of pride in that. We're very glad to be able to provide our staff that opportunity. And then uh, that theme was turned into a t-shirt. And so we've had opportunities for staff and really anybody who wants to, to purchase those t-shirts so that they can also recognize uh, Mental Health Month. Tomorrow night, of course, is our annual celebration. And I think I have figured out that the Kansas Association of Counties yeah. annual conference is scheduled for the fourth week of April because I don't think this is the first year that our commissioners have been at the conference. And so it, it sort of has cut them out of yeah. being able to come to the. They did it in June last year because okay. of COVID related stuff. They ah. pushed it out, but yeah, it normally is. Yeah. I was going to try to make it work. I, I thought maybe I'll just drive up to Clay Center and then swoop back around because it's down in Solana, yeah. but everything's happening at the exact same time. So, so I think this year, you know, I don't know. We, we may just need to look at whether or not we can move it to a different Tuesday uh, in April next year, because we do, you know, over the last couple of years, we've worked to get our county commissioners more involved in the work of Pawnee Mental Health. And so we have a lot more counties that have at least one of their commissioners who serves on our governing board. And so uh, by virtue of the fact that we've got these two events that are happening at the same time, it does eliminate um, some people from being able to attend. But it's, it's an annual celebration where we honor our staff. We um, acknowledge our um, staff who have achieved longevity milestones, those who have retired from the organization. We also uh, acknowledge our employees of the month and we name an employee of the year. So it's a big event for the organization and especially for our employees. And it's just one way for us to, to say thank you to them uh, for everything they do. One of the things that we've recently done at our organization, and I'm really excited about this, as you know, we have a larger strategy really to develop ourselves as an organization that's, that's able to recruit, recruit, retain, and train professionals uh, for behavioral health. We've, we've come to recognize that community mental health centers really are in some ways a path for people 
Um, they come to work for us. They get exposed to what community mental health is about. They get their experience. They get their clinical licensure. And once they get their clinical licensure, they depart in peace and go and serve the community as private practitioners. And uh, I think that for a lot of years, we, we thought maybe we could somehow change that dynamic, but I think we finally recognized that we can't change that dynamic. And instead of trying to change it, we should just embrace it and really develop ourselves to be um, a community mental health center that's seen as one of the best places in the state to get that experience and that training. And so towards that end, uh, we recently uh, applied and were approved through the Behavioral Sciences Regulatory Board to be a provider of continuing education. And so what that means for us is that as we develop trainings and programs and that kind of thing, we can offer them not only to our staff, but also to other professionals in the community as pre-approved by the Kansas Behavioral Sciences Regulatory Board. And so what that does is it reduces the risk that a licensed professional might submit something for approval to BSRB and then have BSRB reject it because for whatever reason, it didn't meet the standards um, of, of a continuing education credit. So we're really excited about that and we're beginning now that process of identifying uh, staff who are interested, willing, uh, and able to provide those um, continuing education credits uh, so that their coworkers and other professionals in the community can benefit from that. Um, don't know if you've heard, but we had an incident at Claflin in your building a couple weeks ago. This is the second time we had bricks thrown through the window. Um, and so it's been, and I'm, I apologize, I don't remember how long ago the first incident was, but it was at least a year ago. Um, happened, it was either on the weekend or at night, nobody was in the building. We had probably four windows broken out um, by bricks that had been thrown through them. And of course, this is of interest to you because it's your building. Um, those were repaired and then week before last, we had another incident. I don't know if they're related or not. Um, I'm hoping that that will be part of RCPD's investigation. But in this situation, um, the person, the alleged person, and I know I need to describe it as alleged, the alleged person started um, at the, the business center at the intersection of uh, Claflin and Denison and threw bricks through some cars at that location. And then they went west on Claflin Road and broke out four windows on the east side of the building. And what was unusual about this was that this was during the day. And so none of the episodes that have ever happened in to that building, and it's interesting because that building in particular has four times been targeted, um, you know, in, 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 in the time that I've been director at Pawnee, um, it's been now probably, I'm, I'm just, and this is just a guess, so I have to clarify that, but it's probably been six years ago that there was an attempted arson in that building. And it also involved the state fire marshal coming out and um, bringing dog, the dog, the uh, fire dog. Um, and they were able at that time to identify that there was accelerant that was used to try to, to burn that building down. And then the year after that, no, that was the year before that, um, and, and by the way, that was never, that, that was never solved. Uh, they never did identify who tried to burn the building down. Um, the year before that, we had somebody who tried to drive their car into the building. Um, that was a client and it was a situation where they were unhappy about medications that were being prescribed. Um, two years ago now, or a year ago now, we had the situation with bricks being thrown through the window, that was never solved. But in this situation, after the bricks came through the east window, or east windows, again, there were four windows, the alleged 
perpetrator went on to Lafine and took windows out of some cars in the parking lot of Lafine, again using bricks. Um, this time um, that the individual was apprehended by RCPD. And so they are in the process of working on that. And one of our employees was actually hit in the head with the brick. And so there are um, aggravated assault charges um, as a result of that. So um, it's, it's very disturbing um, when that happens, of course. And uh, we spent some time that day uh, because it happened late in the morning. Uh, we had the opportunity over the noon hour to actually have a critical incident debriefing with our employees and um, talked through that incident with them and, uh, you know, just checked in with them regarding how they were doing, whether they felt like they could continue working and um, also encouraged them to consider how that might or might not affect their clients for that day. So uh, that's something to be aware of. I suspect that there'll be more information um, coming out um, from the police about that. How's the employee say. doing? She's doing fine. Good, good. Um, we sent her to the hospital to get checked out and you know she had a she had a slight concussion and so felt the impact of that for a couple of days, but she's doing well. So, um, on a happier note, we are getting ready for summer camp, and this year we're having um, three three episodes of Stars Camp, and there being a little Stars Camp is a camp that we have each summer for children with serious emotional disturbances, and this year we're tailoring it a little bit more uh, to the needs the age and the skill level of the children. And so June 1st through 3rd, we are having a STARS camp at Mission Creek, and that will be for youth who are ready for more of a personal challenge. And the reason it's more personally challenging for them is that Mission Creek is a more rustic camp than the one that they're used to. And so there are more opportunities for frustration, uh, more opportunities for having to really um, go above and beyond maybe what they're their experience level uh, has been. And then we're having our traditional star camp uh, for older youth at Rock Springs Ranch, August 2nd through 4th. And then this year for the first time, we're gonna have a camp just for the littles. And so this will be just an overnight at uh, White Memorial Camp. And uh, this will be for the younger groups, the younger kids um, with serious emotional disturbances. So, you know, we have found over time that um, the youngers, the littles have a harder time being away from home um, than the older kids. And so we're excited to be able to offer those three different unique opportunities to the, the kids we serve. There are opportunities for the community to support that and, uh, you know, in the way of um, financial contributions to help offset the costs um, of providing star scan um, for our kids with serious emotional disturbances. We, we are, I'm pleased to report too that um, the governor did sign the budget bill and um, that budget bill this year includes um, some additional resources for staffing at the state hospitals. There's additional resources for crisis stabilization units. Um, there, they did also pass the bill that introduces or that allows for mobile competency evaluations. And I talked about that a little bit um, the last time I reported this, this bill that, that has now been signed into law will allow for community mental health centers um, to provide competency and restoration services as long as they have an appropriately secure location in the community. I really think that out of the gate, where we're going to see that happen is probably going to be in Kansas City and Wichita. Um, I don't expect we're going to probably see very many of the community mental health centers do that because that is the substitute for what has been happening at Larned State Hospital. Most of us aren't um, equipped with the location or with staff who are appropriately trained to be able to engage in that restoration process uh, with individuals. But you have to start somewhere. And, and this I think is the start of something that will help reduce the backlog of individuals who are in jail 
while they wait for the opportunity to be transferred to Marmot State Hospital for competency restoration. So um, some good things that happened this year with the legislature and um, we're looking forward to the opportunities that that provides for us to do a better job of providing services to people um, as we move forward. Any questions for me? Okay, I will stick around yeah, for 930. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> A lot of trees in your packet today. I'm glad you didn't have to print it off. Yeah. <laughs> Late last Thursday, we were notified by Stuart Little of Little Government Relations that the governor released a budget amendment to her original budget recommendations, which was after the um, document that you're looking at was submitted. Um, she included additional funding in FY23 for community corrections grants. The official request um, was explained in the following um, way, and I'm just going to quote it. Uh, this budget amendment will add $841,113 for FY23 to increase grants to county operated community corrections agencies for a 5% pay increase. The 2022 legislature concurred with my recommendations to increase expenditures by 8.4 million for, from the state general fund to bring community correction supervision officers in line with board service officers, including the judicial branch in the 5% statewide pay increase and not including these agencies will create a pay disparity between community correction supervision officers and court service officers. The additional funding will maintain parity. And so that was from the governor, which that was great news. The first time we've heard her talk about, you know, the difference in the parity between the two uh, supervision entities. And that's um, a little over half of what you originally asked. It was 14 something. Wasn't yeah, it? we I think the <clears throat> final was around 14.3 or 14.5. Okay. And so um, the 8.4 plus the 841,000 will be okay. oh, super helpful. Um, the House and the Senate Budget Committees did agree to add that funding, and so next week is when they, of course, will vote on the final version of the budget bills. Um, so what I'm asking of you today, since um, this is late news and it's not in there, um, is to approve the, um, especially, well, for both adult services and juvenile services, um, a budget that does not include a COLA or merit, um, and for adult services, it doesn't have money for supplies or vehicle insurance as it is written today. Um, and then as the figures come down from the Department of Corrections and we figure out how much, if anything, we're going to get for cost of living increases, then I'll come back and, and give you the summary of where we are, uh, which we're hoping is in the next 30 days because um, our new fiscal year starts on July 1. So kind of a quick turnaround. Um, so our our current plan planning allocation for adult services is $355,835.43. Um, and again, no COLA, no merit money, no supplies and vehicle insurance would be what we're requesting to submit. And then of course we can always do budget revisions with the Department of Corrections. Um, Sometimes if it's over 1% of your total budget or $5,000, it'll need your folks' approval. Do you want to do adult services and then juvenile services? Would that keep it uh, more simple? Okay. We've got to step it. Items yeah, <laughs> yes. So adult services, um, it does include the care coordinator position um, requesting $97,191.08 for the um, care coordinator position, which is a contract with us in Pawnee Mental Health. So it is included in that adult services package. So that is FY23 adult services grant application. You're saying now you want it with no, no. Yeah. Okay. Before um, you said included 
Merit and code, you're saying not for now until you right know, until we figure out, out exactly figure out what the state's yeah doing. how much we're going to get. So and I would probably say the best approach is to wait till we get those actual numbers and then come back with it. Just table it all. Yeah, we'll just table we'll table that for now. So unfortunately, um, we can't do that. Can't do they're that. due Friday by five to the states. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I do have the amount that is without cola and in increases. Um, I have both, I have all three figures if you'd like to see them, but the one with no increase to adult services is $349,904.79. Um, and that's on the adult side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For adult services. So basically flat funding um, right now until we get the, the data from DSC, the numbers. So let's see. What did you do this for that? Uh, I don't see those. It's numbers. not there because yeah. they just got them. <laughs> yeah, because we just okay. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to figure out how to how to put this motion together okay. properly. Yeah. So um because everything on here now is null and void. So I guess I could recommend that we approve the fiscal year 23 adult services comprehensive plan um in the amount of $349,904.79 to be adequately determined at a later date. So that is the personnel amount okay. out of that 355, 835, 43. So the whole amount is 355, 835, 43. Looking to Jesse. Um, but the personnel, you, you stated it correctly. Okay. Personnel is that 349. And that's with the attempt that we're going to come back and officially lay that out. Is, uh, could you get uh, Kirsten the correct number to put in the minutes when yeah, you work absolutely. at the end of the day? Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Okay, so that's the motion. Oh. <laughs> and who can second to approve the? Uh, 23 adult services company and 349,000 plus stuff. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then uh, separately, could you also um, do a motion for the 97,191.08 for the behavioral health uh, care coordinator position that we share? And it would be FY23 care coordinator. It just kind of separates it out from the adult okay. services. That's part of adult services it too, is. not juvenile. Okay. Yes. Is this motion in there? No, it just, in their figures calculation, it didn't get put in there. So it's part of adult services. It just wasn't mentioned in the motion. So it might be a good idea to put that in there. Okay, yeah, if you can get that motion to Kirsten as well. Okay. Right. Yes. And you are kind of hard the, state, the state has passed, you know, the state has passed, and since she submitted this, she said the first part, the state has approved the budget to amend some of this. They're actually going to fund it. Yeah, well, the budget, uh, the budget committee's approved it in each chamber. It has yes. a final, but yes. and that's why it's For, somewhat of a temporary one until they get the final. But the state's committee. not providing any funding for it. Yeah. They are? Yeah. Yes. For the pay increases? Yes. Uh -huh. Good. They um, recommended on Thursday, the governor recommended, and that both houses, budget committees have approved a 5%. Thank goodness. For yeah, um, that's good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I'm glad. First time mm -hmm. in my tenure. But yeah. she turned all this stuff in, and now we're just trying to work That's through it because it's got to be due by Friday. Yeah, just get the correct numbers, of course, that way okay. we get it in the minutes, right? But okay. no, I'm glad for you guys. It's yeah. good. Thanks. Okay, so we need to do separate for adult services the care coordinator position, mm -hmm. FY23. Sorry for the confusion. Well, we're getting more money, so we can deal with that. <laughs> all right, so That's I will go ahead and make a motion them. then that we. Yes. Uh, approve for adult services, a care coordinator position for fiscal year 23 in the amount of $97,191.08. I second that. And moving second to approve the uh, care coordinator position for fiscal year 23. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. So moving on, I'm not sure what page it is. There's a 10 at the top or a package page of page 45. 
So I'm not sure which one is the right page number for juvenile services. Any changes in funding on that? Um, we are not sure. Um, unofficially, we've been advised if the, I don't, my estimation is that 800,000 does not include juvenile services grants. Um, but um, unofficially, they've said they will take, uh, Department of Corrections would take unexpended funds to possibly augment the cost of living on the adult services side. But when you do the math, I think it's solely on adult services grants, the 5% um, increase, but that is yet to be um, clarified yet from the state since it was Thursday night. Um, so this budget, um, again, no goalless and no merits. <clears throat> Um, black funding, and it appears that we would have enough for all of our expenses, operating expenses out of this particular budget. Um, just a minute. Is it 30 seconds? That is person over this. Yeah. And the allocation is the schedule is 315.779. So it's not to confuse you more. I'm going to give you the total allocation for that. Uh, $315,779.30. Again, submitting it by Friday at five with no full in But operating expenses paid for. So that's a plus. And that's for the adult, or that's for the juvenile, yeah. excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Juvenile services. Um, okay, so much like the last one, I'll make a motion that we approve the fiscal year 23 juvenile, juvenile service uh, comprehensive grant in the amount of $315,779.30 with allocations to be based later. I would second that. I moved and seconded. <coughs> approve the fiscal year 23 juvenile services comprehensive grant. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, county alcohol funds, page 11 or 70. Here's it. So these are dollars that are collected from establishments within the county. Um, several years ago, your predecessors had given um, the review of those applications and the process to the Joint Corrections Advisory Board. Um, they did review proposals. Um, initially, there were two. And then um, when we needed some more clarification as to exactly how the uh, proposal met the requirements of the statute, which is education, intervention, um, and treatment of drug or alcohol use, um, they decided to withdraw their application and wait another year to submit it. And that was Ogden Youth Center. Um, so the one before you that you have is um, it's from Community Corrections on behalf of the drug court team, um, up to $2,900, um, $2,975 for a drug court team member to attend the National Association of Drug Court Professionals. Um, the training is an annual training <clears throat> every year in the late summer, and this year it is in um, Nashville, Tennessee, the last week of July. And so far, we have 14 out of 15 team members that um, are expressing interest, and we believe we have secured enough funding almost to send all 13 of those um, team, drug court team members to the training. So that would be to send one more team member out of the county alcohol. Um, as of last week, there was a little over $4,400 in that account. Well, this is pretty straightforward. I don't know what to do. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I think I remember right. This, this is actually a pretty pretty important one, depending on where we're at here locally. So um, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, up to $2,975 for a drug court team member to attend the NADCP training uh, out of the county alcohol tax dollars. Um, I would second that. We move and seconded to approve uh, 
stunning for a 14 members to attend the training. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Need to sign that. And I will let you know which team member is going on behalf of the county of Colorado dollars. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. And again, I apologize for the lateness of the numbers, but I'm just happy for some extra funding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your Thanks, time. Shelley. Thanks, Jesse. Pushers, press conference. Thanks, Daryl. Notice that too. I don't know where the numbers were. I couldn't find it. That's because they're not there yet. <laughs> Well, I had the, the last thing, but it's page one. Where they're supposed to be. <clears throat> They do, they do, and it's such a different organization with being run by the state and our employees and funding from both and different. Fiscal years, fiscal years, <laughs> multiple grants to keep track of. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, my screen went blank. Uh -oh. <laughs> Press conference time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> We have a proclamation for the <clears throat> Mental Health Month. Uh, Mental Health Month 2022 proclamation. Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well being, and whereas prevention works, treatment is effective, and people can and do recover, and whereas each business, school, government agency, healthcare provider, organization, and citizens share the burden of mental health problems and have a role in promoting supporting mental health efforts. And whereas all people face challenges in life that can impact their mental health, especially following the last two years of public health emergency. Therefore, Raleigh County does here proclaim May 2022 as Mental Health Month, it calls upon businesses, schools, government agencies, healthcare providers, organizations, and citizens of Raleigh County to recommit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health, its relationship to a strong, vibrant community, community, the steps our citizens can take to protect our mental health and the needs for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental health conditions. Thank you very much. Um, I, yeah, I just want to say thank you. And uh, thank you to you for proclaiming May as Mental Health Month. Um, um, I, I think we really have no idea. I think we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg in terms of what the mental health needs. Um, oh, absolutely. Yes. And, you know, on the front end of the pandemic, what we saw is people retreated, they backed down, they did not reach out for the services that they needed. And we heard that not only in mental health, but also in physical health care, primary health care, specialty health care. People were reluctant, they backed down, and now, you know, they're starting to reach out for, for care. And we're seeing at Pawnee unprecedented requests for services at the same time that we're also, like everybody else, finding that we're facing workforce challenges and workforce shortages. And so it has created one of the most unusual set of circumstances I've seen in the 16 years that I've been executive director in terms of just having an overwhelming request for need for services and really being challenged to have the staff to meet those needs. 
So I appreciate the uh, attention you're bringing to this. I also just want to acknowledge our two uh, two of our governing board members. Um, Ann Brown is the chairman of the County Mental Health Services Board, and she, of course, is from Riley County. Stan Wilson represents adults with severe and persistent mental illnesses. Both of these individuals are long-term members of the governing board. And of course, I'd be remiss to not thank and acknowledge uh, Commissioner Ford uh, for his service on the County Mental Health Governing Board as well. So thank you very much. And I've noticed on TV, there's a lot of commercials about mental health. I mean, I don't know if that's part of this mental health thing that month, if that's why those are running, but I don't remember seeing that before, but seeing Yes, I, I, yeah. I think that's part of it. You know, the other thing that I had never seen in my years as executive director was the amount of federal financial support that has slowed mm -hmm. down into the states. Mm -hmm. And part of what that is allowing, it, it's, it definitely provided the sort of safety net that the mental health centers needed um, for the last couple of years, just to keep our finances where they needed to be and to sort of shore us up. Um, a lot of that money has also been directed towards marketing and public relations to bring awareness um, to individuals that services, that that there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that you have a mental health concern. Yeah, that's what the commercial is about. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There is nothing wrong with it. And, and in fact, you need to acknowledge uh, you know, if you're having mental health concerns and there are resources available to you. And more than anything, I hope that what that would do would be to normalize mental illness for people. I think many individuals who experience, whether it's anxiety or depression or whatever mental health conditions, feel like it's just them and that it's something that's just wrong with them and that everybody else in the world is doing just fine. And I'm here to tell you that is not true. This is just fine. That's, that's <laughs> right, that's right. And I do think that people oftentimes feel like they need to just, that they need to just hide it better because everybody else is doing great. Um, but I think you're right, it's just that other people maybe hide it better. Um, and we wanna bring it out of being hidden, out of the darkness, out of the shadows so that we can talk about it and so that people can get the help that they need. So, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, we have Plan C at 9.45. Get up. What are you doing? Sure. I was just going to say after I said that, it looked like you were struggling. Well, you know, I said for a while, I just think it starts going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Yeah. These long stuff. I've had to do that when I've had back problems, you know. Yeah, I know so. Yeah, I would you know, been going busy morning. It's been to past deep creek road on interstate and back into Briggs. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was afraid that it was blowing oil and just blew something, but it was okay. Sounded fine, ran fine. I switched her cars and oh. took hers in and told her to keep on going because she was going to a test at Washburn. So she didn't want to be late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so busy morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just guess. Got it, 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 well, you talk about cross training people to yeah. do other roles. So, um, for yeah, example, I mean, we're overly deep on that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
three backups. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I keep going down the list. Just, oh, did I already give you one? I'm sorry. I, are we doing two now? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> no, we're doing four. <laughs> but two right now, so that making a total of five, I guess, or six. Well, I can't do the math anymore. Six, yeah. he's, 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 both of that he's trying to tie that record again. Yeah, five caught you. We caught you. And here, my wife taught Ann's kids. Oh, okay. Well, actually, Ann's husband was uh, my baseball coach for a year, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the early 90s. Oh, well, yeah. Baseball kids. Mm -hmm. It's a boy. Yeah. Like the two old ones. That's when she came in. Kept thinking. Mm -hmm. I know that person somewhere, but didn't <laughs> I've seen her one time. And he's still on Houston cruise. On Houston cruise. Yeah. Still on Houston. Yeah. I don't know on that. that. I, I, I'm assuming you know, probably. Was, yeah. 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 Oh, is that the one down there on the one corner there that has all the limestone? I, I feel like there might be some discussion. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I think the uh, that's where they <laughs> Because they had this they store downtown. Mm -hmm. um, this still had when he was, he was coaching. He was coaching. Well, we all, at the end of the year, we all got together. Yeah, we were just seeing this game. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. That yeah. Up the yeah. Yeah. I see George Brett get his like thousand extra base yeah. or something that night. It's yeah. not going to be just super easy. It's it. 30. You know, I have a tendency to say we need time. so. It's tough. To, okay. It's impossible to guess. Uh, yeah, we do have to put the shoes in the first time. We gotta stop by the seamstress and pick up some slacks. I've got to put them in that before noon. We're good. We meant to do it on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. But next Friday, yeah. next Monday is going to be really long. Yeah. Four o'clock and seven o'clock and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we put next Monday to start earlier on my part. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Was there five next Monday too? No, not quite as many. Uh, we'll do it. A little bit full. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't speak yeah. out of turn. We'll see. That's yeah. what we yeah. yeah, we got to put up the cars. Mm -hmm. Got her car in the bridge. So yeah. What does it matter with it? Check engine light came on, so oh well, at least it shut down. Yeah, really? everything sounded fine. Well, it was fine, so uh, it's probably just the sensor, the O2 sensor. I, I drove it in and it ran fine, so check it next day. And I just the only thing I hate about that is they should be able to go in there and turn the sensor off and the light goes off. And that was my first experience. Well, then, why had that? And then also, well, what's that? One of the sensors in the brakes. Can I see if they already added this one? They, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. When I did put the motion in the chair, you know, the one thing I've had problems with my truck over the three years I've had it are the air pressure sensors. Oh. I've replaced all four. Four of them are still under warranty, but I've, I've replaced all of them once and then another one a second. No, we don't unless that new I got, uh, I got a one thing to escape. They sign up with reach out if there's any tail tire pressure. Yeah. Oh, seriously? What a joke. That would be cheap. Fortunately for me, I didn't have that problem. I think my girlfriend's talking about these here in your truck, though. I've literally gone through four sets of them. Well, what the dealer said was is that <laughs> the truck was down yeah. south. It came from Louisiana. So when it got up here, the sensors may have not have adjusted to the extreme cold and they have a tendency of kind of blowing out. Oh, no, they do that. The cheapest ones I can. Is it? Well, just turn them off. I've got an air pressure gauge. I don't really need that. But no, it's, a, it's a thing. Yeah, I can't, I can't do it. Nope. Send me a call on those plates. 
Yeah, you could if you really no, need to. All, all, all it's the yeah, yeah. 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 It's just, just a computer. Every module in the just computer. Just a computer. Just a computer. Says yeah. the IT guy. That's all good cards are nowadays. It's just a computer. And that's bolts and computers. Yeah. And fiberglass. I, that, I could hack it. <laughs> It's all tuners you do. Okay. Did you have anything to start with? No, let's just go ahead. Okay. Um, I move the county commissioners, including Chairman McKinley, Vice Chair Fokey, and Commissioner Ford, along with Elizabeth Ward, Human Resource Manager, Rich Vargo County Clerk, and Clancy Holman, County Counselor, turning for the commission recess into executive session, pursuant to the non-elected personnel matters exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act, to discuss applicants for the position of county appraiser, and possibly to schedule additional interviews or make a conditional offer of employment, and to protect the privacy of the applicants, the open meeting to resume in the county commission chambers at 10.15 a.m. I'd second that. And move and second to move into executive session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Okay, you guys are live. Okay. I'll move the Board of County Commissioners come out of executive session. I will second that. And moved and seconded to come out of executive session. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, also move that the record reflect no binding action was taken during the executive session. Second. Been moved and seconded that no binding action was taken. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'll go ahead and move again. That the county commissioners, including Chairman McKinley, Vice Chair Fokey, and Commissioner Ford, along with Elizabeth Ward, Human Resource Manager, Rich Fargo County Clerk, and Clancy Holman County Counselor, Attorney for the Commission, recess into executive session pursuant to the non-elected personnel's exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act to discuss applicants for the position of county appraiser and possibly to schedule additional interviews or make a conditional offer of employment and to protect the privacy of the applicants. The open meeting to resume in the county commission chamber at 10.35 a.m. We moved and seconded to go into executive session. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.
Good. Okay. I'll move the Board of County Commissioners come out of executive session. I'll second that. Been moved and seconded to come out of executive session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I also move that the record reflect the motion shall be taken with consensus reached in executive session. Aye. Or second. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> 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 moved and seconded that actions will be taken consistent with consensus. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm going to go outside and walk around for a little bit, I think. I, that's it. Right, we'll make a motion. Next, to we have intergovernmental at 12, yep. number of commissioners, and then we're back here at two. two. Right, so do they adjourn or they leave it to the. the no, we meeting? don't adjourn until after. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun. We'll do. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate your help. Thank you, commissioners. I'll give you some updates when I have them. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll just start another one. The sad part. Ugh. Well, at least I'm not. I'm here. So. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah. Not. I'm glad about that. That's one good thing. For sure. Or else we'd have to delay it even longer. Thirty days and counting. Oh. We're actually twenty nine. Oh, really? oh. It's on the twenty fourth. Okay. So is, but she left her coffee cup. What? Oh, I can take it. I can take you it. Want to? Yeah, I'll take it. In that case, let me send her a text. You're bringing it so she isn't, doesn't start hitting this way. Thank you, sir. Oh, I got to carry a coffee cup that's got a Nebraska sticker on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a beyond call. You can tear it off. <laughs> Say it was like this when I. Noticed that my plastic tape on top of it. That's right. So I don't know. I found it this way. <laughs> and home and gave it to me. That's so. right. That's right. That's correct. Oh man. Let me save that stuff. Any chance I can get a ride with the Intergov? Oh, sure. Yeah. I just realized I took my daughter's car to the shop and I have no vehicle here. <laughs> I'll give you a ride. What time do you want to leave? Whatever time you do. Just that let me know. Doesn't matter to me. Probably, what time did they start? Serving? They start serving at 11 30. Okay. You want to leave about 11 20? Sounds good. Sound good? Yep. Sounds okay. good. Yeah, have a foot wall here. Please, man, calls for it. Right.
I never it just it's ringing all that mean it's buzzing yeah. all that. I thought I was I thought mine was bad. I get a whole I get a whole bunch of the same kind of from the same state and I'll block that and then we'll get it from a different state of the same state. But I never get a whole bunch of them at one time. Yeah, all day long. Yeah, all day long. It is okay. Here's I'm not I haven't had those either. I don't know why it's uh, and that and my phone was messed up until Saturday. Saturday. My phone was ringing stupid. I left it. I said the tire was parked up to you. That's mm -hmm. parking back to the middle, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's yeah, it's weird. That I imagine. Yeah, who wants to like it? Yeah, thank you. It's not never had a shrink in that of life. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So what's this for me? You, snuck out. you have any desire for coffee this afternoon? No. You want to make it fresh? No. I'll bring it back up. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yep. See you in the government. Okay.
Sir, sorry.
bit much.
Yeah, but we riches in our first of our Yeah. Oh, Yeah, I'm going to start with the light. My bad for that. Yeah, it seems like they're on top of this. All my writing material from that previous. Yeah. I'll meet your mind. I've got them. You have your questions, you can hear. I've got it. Bubbly or blue light or whatever it is. I like it. I don't know if I've had that foot that flavor, but get the lime and I it's think like sparkling water. It is, and it's got a little flavor to it. It's yeah, flavored sparkling yeah. I've seen the commercials. I get the I keep lime and what is it, raspberry something at home. It's pretty good. I mean, I don't think it's brand I I guess I ended up stealing this from somebody in their office. I kind of figure out who. I thought it was Michelle Reed's, and then she came back and she said, I, you know, whatever. It's not. So now I stole it from somebody. Yeah, I've got to go make my mints. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I hear a workplace disaster. I know. We're just going to have to be moderating a, a bubbly <laughs> fight. She's stealing stuff from people. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about it and I went back there in my case of sparkling water. It was still there, but the <laughs> box was there. So the first cut two different ones. You hang on to the other one for now. It's <laughs> easier that way, I think. And we're doing these one, this one, these two, a little different format. I don't think so. I don't think so. What do you mean? The questions? The questions are different. Do you mean? No, how we have the. Did I do something different that I didn't intend to? Uh, should be an hour, half hour, hour, half hour. Yeah. Should still be interview followed by discussion on each one. Unless I gave you, maybe I did what we gave John the fake questions one time. Oh, well. Maybe okay. there's something I'm not seeing. So it'd be two to three, and then three to three thirty, three thirty to four thirty, and then the half an hour to five. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. That's I saw you trying to do the numbers yeah. there. Believe me. <laughs> trying to write. Yeah. Think, trying to write and think's my problem. Well, it was torture to even come yeah. up with this. So. And then make sure it matched what we had scheduled. That's a new place over there taking over the warehouse. 
uh, across the street from the worm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I saw the new place in the worm was open. Yeah, and I didn't know it was open. I, I, I did, and I, either, I did. Like that's been open for at least for a couple of weeks. Is and I went to do the little apple brigade over there. I walked past it, and there were. I was surprised that people went there. Yeah, I thought maybe it's yeah. a soft opening. Or something. Yeah, I thought so too. But isn't it the same? Isn't it just the second location of um, the one that's over there on by classroom? I think so. It's just their second. Their own yeah, but it looked like they had food and. Well, they're trying to develop some way to kind of use the entire the entire place. Yeah. Much like it's going to be a coffee shop slash cocktail bar. And I well, thought like, they were going to incorporate right. some kind of a deli or something. That, that, I had. that makes more sense because I left there. I went to the, this place until the music stopped at nine p.m. And I, so I was walking by there at like nine fifteen, and there were you know people coffee shops at nine fifteen are not usually that busy. But no. There were a lot of people in there. So if they had cocktails, that makes oh, sense. Well, I should have just stopped and went in. I forgot what they were going to do. I was just going, walking down to the pharmacy because I park had the park on it, and I thought, why are people in their little tables? What's mm -hmm. going on here? No, what's going on? What's happening? Uh, well, I only got to go to that place once when it was open. That carries it. It was really nice. It was good. Really good. <sighs> yeah, and it, the atmosphere, I love that, just the, all of it, it's separated yeah. that old thing. Yeah. If I mean, I'm going to be here all the time. And can you say this one? <laughs> well, lunch was good. It yeah, really was. Did you guys bring Catherine back? No, nope. it wasn't my job. She was going home to let the dogs out. So I don't know. Let the dogs out? <laughs> just thinking about it. I was 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 just thinking about it. No, I walked right into that one. I did kind of hang out. I wanted to hear the hoot hoot with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not like the other Greg. I'm not going to stand up and dance with it either. <laughs> that was a pretty mean sprinkler he did on Thursday. I got to give him credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely props to him on that. I forgot which one we were starting with again. And so, no, 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 it's live. I'll just have to wait. Just okay. Almost, uh, of course, doesn't mean that I haven't yet, but almost definitely just by less than 24 hours, planted my tomatoes too early with it getting down to like 38 last night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My wife said last week, I think we plant the garden, the, some more of the garden this weekend. I said, sure, why not try it? And, you know, they always say safest May 1st or after, yeah. you know, frost. And whew, I didn't realize it was supposed to get quite so cold. I, you know, in the last eight, nine years, we've had a couple of days in early May where it's, we've had that slushy yeah. snow, you wow. know, so it's yeah, not. Actually, it's been early May. Was yeah. Mm -hmm. I was reading that, I didn't see it too so late, those wall of waters that said that's the thing that. That you can plant them early and get your my dad has used those i had used those in the past when i first come out a decade ago or so decade decade and a half and the thing i didn't like about them you know in our area we have so much wind and then oh, take man. the walls of water in there they are they're much bigger plants but they can't handle the wind they haven't built the strength oh. out and so they get blown over you know and you so that's what i didn't like about it because the, the stems hadn't gotten strong enough and yeah. so yeah, my dad's using them protected, this year. They've been protected, so they mm -hmm. haven't. Yeah, they haven't been able had to withstand the wind. Well, bring all your extra tomatoes. Because okay. mm -hmm. we're not planting any this year, but I want some. Oh. <laughs> I had tomatoes and peppers and beans yesterday, and sixteen tomato plants, two cherry tomato plants, four bell pepper plants. And a whole row of climbing beans, like hey, bending over to beans. Our candidates here, I'm just waiting for our commissioner. We need to. Yeah, yeah, we have, I think, four minutes before we even 
IT is also not out there. I'll <laughs> see walking through the door. Hey, Derek, just want to be sure someone was coming over for a commission executive session. Okay, thank you. So these are probably a pain for an hour. They go back and then sit down for it and then turn back. Aha, speaking of the devil. Mm. All right. How you doing? Do we start on time with two? Oh yeah. Captain is really if we do that, then you'll just want to make a reference that she may be joining after we get started. Put that out there. You make Kathy Folky's outside, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's, right behind. Yeah. She's, she's, she's walking in right behind. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Our interviewee's mm -hmm. name is Kathy. Yeah. Okay, I ran into him. Oh. Well, I didn't run into him. Well, that's good. That's better. <laughs> I met them. <laughs> so it's a better story, the first one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Human Timing chain sensor adjust automatic adjuster on the bar. Say that again. Timing chain automatic sensor mm. on the phone. Computer. So fixed. We'll do it. All right. Have a ride next for the county Uber system, Mr. Holt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> If I had to do it, you'd do it. Uh, I would. Any time to do it for you. I think they ought, need to allocate more time for that meeting every every month. No, they just need to. No, they just need to know that people time. have to have. It's a lunch hour, and they, they need to get done at one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there are. A couple. With that meeting and the uh, county officials, previous people who ran them said we're done at, at one or at five. We're done. You know, so we're done. Yeah. And speaking of, it's two o'clock, so let's stay on time on the front half. Yeah, so, um, I'll go ahead and move it to county commissioners, including Chairman McKinley, Vice Chair Fokey, and Commissioner Ford, along with Elizabeth Ward, Human Resource Manager, Rich Fargo County Clerk, and Clancy Holman, County Counselor, turning for the commission recess into executive session, pursuant to the non-elected personnel matters exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act, to interview an applicant for the position of County Museum Director, slash curator and to protect the privacy of the applicant, the open meeting to resume in the county commission chambers at 3 p.m. I would second that. Then moved and seconded to <coughs> move into executive session. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Okay, I should have left. Your life. All right, well, I'll go ahead and move that the Board of County Commissioners come out of executive session. I would second that. Been moved and seconded to come out of executive session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll also move that the record reflect no binding action was taken during the executive session. Second that. And move that the record show no binding action was taken. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And then to follow up on this one, I'll move that the county commissioners, including Chairman McKinley, Vice Chair Fokey, and Commissioner Ford, along with Elizabeth Ward, Human Resource Manager, Rich Fargo County Clerk, and Clancy Coleman, Coleman County Counselor, uh, Attorney for the Commission, recess into executive session pursuant to the non-elected personnel's exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act to discuss their interview with an applicant for the position of county museum director slash curator and to protect the privacy of the applicant. The open meeting to resume in the county commission chambers at 3.30. That's for IT. Oh. PM. It'll be right this time. <laughs> 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 I would second that. Been moved and seconded to go into executive session. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
<laughs> so it's just turning off the microphone and the stop share and the stop share, right? Mm -hmm. He wanted us to do it. He's, he's the only vote for it, though. I was trying to help you, Tyler. It's okay. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and move that the county commission come out of executive session. I would second that. And move and second to come out of executive session. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll, also um, I'll also move that the record reflect no binding action was taken during the executive session. I would second that. And move and second that no binding action was taken. All in favor? Aye. 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 And here we go again. They're very young. I know they're really similar. All right, I'll move the county commissioners, including Chairman McKinney, <coughs> Vice Chair Fokey, and Commissioner Ford, along with Elizabeth Ward, Human Resource Manager, Rich Fargo County Clerk, and Clancy Holman County Counselor, attorney for the commission, recess into executive session, pursuant to the non elected personnel matters exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act, to interview an applicant for the position of county museum director, slash curator, to protect the privacy of the applicant, the open meeting to resume in the county commission chamber at 4 30 p.m. I second that. moved and seconded to go into executive session. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Okay. Okay. I'll move the Board of County Commissioners come out of executive session. I will second that. Been moved and seconded to come out of executive session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Also, <clears throat> that the uh, record reflect no binding action was taken during the executive session. I would second that. Been moved and seconded that no binding action was taken. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, for the last time today. <laughs> hey, hey. We're not adding any. I make a motion. We add no more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clancy, you can't add any more. I can't add any. <laughs> <laughs> and not on Thursday. Not on Thursday point, point. <laughs> I move that the county commissioners, including Chairman McKinley, uh, Vice Chair Fokey, and Commissioner Ford, along with Elizabeth Ward, Human Resource Manager, Rich Fargo County Clerk, and Clancy Holman, uh, County Counselor, Attorney for the Commission, recess into executive session pursuant to the non elected personnel matters exception to the Kansas Open Meetings Act to discuss their interview with an applicant for the director. For the position of county museum director and curator and protect the uh, privacy of the applicant with the open meeting to resume in the county commission chamber at 5 p.m i would second that been moved and seconded to go into executive session all in favor aye, aye.
Your life. All right. I'll move the Board of County Commissioners come out of executive session. I would second that. And moved and seconded to come out of executive session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Also move that the record reflect no binding action was taken during the executive session. I would second that. And moved and seconded that no binding action was taken. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Maybe Are you happy now? I'm always happy. No, one more executive session to have. We got no. one. <laughs> In fact, I'm, a, I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> Did I say second under or second? I'm worried about pronunciation now. <laughs> Am I saying it incorrectly? Uh, that's funny. I don't think anybody's watching right now. Oh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably, probably cooking dinner, which is probably what we should be doing right now. I don't have anything else today, so uh, no. somebody else does. I'm going to make a motion that we officially adjourn the April 25th, uh, 2022 meeting in the Riley County Commission. I would second that. Maybe.